Hello, I'm Simon Christie and welcome to the amazing Love Day 4x4 Adventure Park here in sunny Barmera, South Australia. We've got a big afternoon planned, it is Australia Extreme. Let's find out a little bit more about this amazing event. Fred lightly, keep it safe, play hard. Tony Waitley, the owner of the Love Day 4x4 Adventure Park, has put together a fantastic afternoon of entertainment, displays and action. Starting with motorbikes and mini quad bikes, you'll see plenty of action from Tony's extreme two-wheel drive stunt car display. You'll see Toby Waitley, the property owner's son and one of the main stunt drivers, manning this electric esky. There'll be trophy car displays. There'll be plenty of humour and excitement with all types of off-road vehicles. We'll see this baby flying through the air on a number of occasions. Even Nana's Pajero has been brought in for some action. Have you ever wondered how a jet-powered lawnmower will go? You'll be surprised what they do with this corkscrew ramp. There are sheep to be shorn. We've got three clowns on hand. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, and a nurse. There's a beer bulance. They'll be mowing the lawns. There are a number of spectacular bike ramps. And the absolute piece de resistance, we're going to see this prime mover flying through the air, attempting to break the world record for a flying truck. Absolutely awesome, can't wait for that one. Good weekend, absolute perfect weather. We opened the show just introducing everyone just nice and steady so the crowd sort of knew who they were looking at. The freestyle riders, we had Ryan, Matt and Brenton come over from East Gippsland. Great bunch of boys. They went out there and put on a really good show from my point of view. Flying through the air, upside down and all them tricks with them fancy names. Thought it was pretty cool out there and good for the locals in our area to see such a high level of talent out there. Of course we had to bring out the esky jump, that's always a crowd favourite. All the beer drinkers sit back and go, whoa, esky on wheels, that's pretty good. Toby got out and launched that through the air a few times, which is pretty cool. Toby took the plastics off his trophy cart, so this is a brand new trophy cart. It's only had it for four days, and you'll see a lot more of these things on full drive TV in the future. But with the plastics off, they look like a bit of a strange looking buggy. Reason being, he didn't want to scratch it in case he was stuffed up, but hit this little ramp here and drove it on two wheels and sort of pretty amazing to myself because I've had a go at this and I just fell on my head. It wasn't a lot of fun for me. My cousin, Darren Hall, gave him a phone call because I knew he was not bad at knocking the wool off a sheep. He came over and brought a few sheep over and stood up there and gave a few demos and had a few little shearing competitions. One stage I grabbed a guy out of the audience and we had a bit of a competition to see whether we could shear a person quicker than we could shear a sheep. Basically whoever finished first it was shears down and you had to stay like that for the rest of the day and unfortunately for Gary the sheep wasn't embarrassed amongst his friends because they got all its wool off nicely. So Gary had a bit of a messy hairstyle for the rest of the day, but a few people bought him a few beers just for being a really good sport with that. As usual, Toby filled a few gaps here and there with the quad bike, went out and did some quad bike stunts. We had a couple of clowns there that were trying to impersonate a lot of the stuff we're doing for most of the show, which was quite exciting. A few times for me, I was sort of lost for words and yeah, I just couldn't believe what these clowns were doing. They were probably the most professional clowns I'd ever see. Probably be bringing them along to the Melbourne 4x4 show. The kids along the fence line were just laughing, you know, when you look over and you see tears in their eyes from these clowns, it was pretty cool to see, and mums and dads laughing. Dougie and Simon, two of me stuntmen, created a Ford laser concept here where they had two Ford lasers have a bit of tug of war, but something went wrong and they actually broke in half, but we can still drive them broken in half. I've seen it on Top Gear, it is possible. 
took them back to the shed, put them back together and poured them out with the two fronts joined together. Reason being is that laser is only a 1.3 cylinder two wheel drive and it is a four wheel drive park so that turned into a 2.6 litre four wheel drive four wheel steer and you, know, you can see the fun you can have with a homemade four wheel drive so don't write the old Ford laser off yet. Hi, I'm Brad Smith from Mickey Thompson Tyres. You know, there's no better feeling than a brand new set of tyres, and they always look great, just like this one. The problem is, if you don't look after those tyres, they may not always look this good. Today I'm going to share with you the early warning signs to identify any irregular wear that might be happening with your tyres, so you correct it before they get damaged. The most common forms of irregular wear that you can actually fix yourself are to do with inflation. So basically, if the tyres tend to be wearing more on both shoulders, you've got an issue with inflation. Your tyre pressure is too low. You need to increase your pressure in the tyres and then that will even out the wear across the tyre. Alternatively, if your tyre has got too high a tyre pressure, you'll see significant wear in the middle and the shoulders will have very little wear on them at all. Another type of wear you might see is actually where the wear starts on one shoulder and then wears across the tyre, leaving the other shoulder almost at full tread. This is commonly wheel alignment wear, and the best way to rectify this is to go and see your local tyre store wheel alignment specialist and have a wheel alignment done. The last type of wear is one we see a lot of, and that's feathering or scallopy type wear on tyres. Now there's a couple of things that can cause this. If it's a tyre like this with bigger blocks, Sometimes that can be caused by lack of rotation. So the best thing to do is get it to your retail tyre store, get those guys to check your tyres out and they can rotate, balance and do a wheel alignment. The other issues it can be, it can be a mechanical style wear with the tyres. So although it's feathering like it's lack of rotation, if it's more extreme and really quite sharp in the way it's feathering, you may find it could be shock absorbers or some suspension component that needs to be replaced. And again, your best port of call is your wheel alignment specialist or your local tyre outlet to make sure you get that checked out. With what I've shown you today, you should be able to just about identify any irregular tyre wear problem you've got. But of course, the minute you find it, your best bet is to go and see your local tyre outlet and get an expert to have a look at it. Thanks for joining me for this week's Mickey Thompson Tire Tip. Holden's toughest 4x4 ever has arrived. Introducing the all-new Holden Colorado 7. It comes with seven seats as standard and it's loaded with serious off-road grunt. You'll get three-ton towing and the awesome 470 newton meter Duramax diesel engine, plus an impressive weighting depth and hill descent control, all for the hardcore adventurer. The all-new Holden Colorado 7 is here. Take it off-road at your Holden dealer today. 30 second kitchen, a kitchen in 30 seconds. Fridge slide first. Fridge slide's got 130 kilo tracks in it, so it's nice and tough. Remove the R clip, don't lose it. Drop the pin, leg locker. Kitchen out. Lock kitchen down here. Retrieve the R clip. Lock on here, R clip in. Leg here, leg here. Pull them together. Stove, Billy. How good's that, guys? Couldn't ask for quicker. I'm Chris Weston, off-road racer and owner of Off-Road Rush, and I wouldn't race on anything else than my Mickey Thompson tyres. I trust my Mickey Thompson at high speed. They can handle wet or dry without any trouble. And that means I can keep racing while the competitors stop to change tyres. Mickey Thompson, no wonder they call them legendary. Call 1300 Mickey for your nearest dealer. Hi, I'm Jackie from 360 Gearboxes and Diffs and today I'm going to talk about prevention being the cheapest cure. Here are some inside tips on preventative cures. Always be sure to run the correct oils and oil levels in your gearbox, transfer case and diffs. If doing regular submersions, always carry spare diff and gearbox oils and make sure you have extended breathers fitted. Always check oils after deep water crossings, no matter how short or long. 10 to 20 minutes of your time here can save you thousands of dollars later. You may wonder why Simon's team pull up and have a cuppa before crossing that river or deep mud hole. It's not that they're chicken or scared, they actually know what they're doing. They are letting their vehicle's driveline cool down before crossing. 
It has been proven that the sudden drop in temperature of air in your gearbox and diff housing will create a lower pressure inside, thereby essentially sucking in water wherever it can. So even past seals or breathers. So make sure you pack your billy with that bottle of oil. Old or contaminated oils cause premature wear of components. Good oils are clean and they look like honey. Oil which is grey in colour or milky is no longer protecting your components. Or even worse, if you have a metallic shine or metal chunks in your oil, then you have a serious problem which needs addressing immediately. Otherwise, it will cost you more money in the long run. Following these simple tips will lengthen the lifespan of your gearbox and your diffs. I'm Jackie from 360 Gearboxes and Diffs. Thanks for listening. The boys had some old cars they painted up and did a little bit of a driving out there, slid around a little bit amongst each other. Got Toby to practice a bit of his parallel parking for when he has to do his driver's licence end of next year. So I don't know how the driving instructor will go. I don't think his methods probably will pass, but you know, it was all good fun anyway. Took these cars from just a bit of simple stuff to what we know, what we're, what we're good at doing. Launched them off jumps, flying through the air and stacking on top of each other. And as you can see, Rob, one of our newest drivers, did the perfect stack up drop one on top just sweetly. The Big Love Day 80 series got a bit of a run, not very often it goes out and does stuff like this, we give it a run and the big jump that we're going to jump the semi over hadn't been tested yet, we thought the best way to test it is during the show. So Toby went out and lined it up a few times with the 80 series until he launched it nicely and yeah we sort of stood back and ticked the box and said yep that jump will work for a truck. If you remember last year Dougie got in the little car and went for a world record reverse jump and missed out by inches. Well this year Simon got in a car and longer run up, bit high ramp, hit it a lot faster and first attempt fell two or three inches short, wasn't much at all. Then he got back in and yeah held it pinned all the way up the ramp and beat the record by nine inches. Matty Reposada, what can you tell us about this machine? Oh, this is a creation I made in my old man's workshop. It's an old 16 litre truck, turbo, homemade combustion chamber and a few bits and pieces from a scrapyard. Other than that, it's a standard lawnmower? It was, until I cut it up. And what will you be doing with it this afternoon? Hopefully making lots of noise with it, put a bit of a flame out the back and hopefully please the crowd a bit. Good luck with the demonstration. Thank you very much. Fireman and Dave, an important part of safety and security here? Yeah, that's correct. I hear you've been working out as well? I have, I've been putting a lot of work into me, uh, me abs, my arms. Give us a look at those abs. Oh, if you look closely this afternoon, you'll see my abs. See you out there on the track? You will do. We brought Chloe out, it's a ute that I sponsor, she's in the ute scene. These people are dedicated people with their utes, going around doing shows, you know, it's a bit like the street machine version, but this is the bush version. She went out and did a bit of circle work, spun it around a few times, and you know, it was all going good, but then her boyfriend Simon got a little bit jealous and come out in his stonking big V8, just went absolutely crazy. It was great to hear the V8 sliding around, did a bit of a burnout on the dirt, which was a bit of an eye opener. Aussie Blackjack was here doing monster truck rides and that's awesome for kids to be able to just jump in the back of that and have a bit of a ride and sit up there. You know, monster trucks are a big thing for a little kid. Sounds cool. Big thing for a little kid. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris Roberts from Me Mother 4 Drive Products and I want to briefly talk to you about winches that are available in the market today. There are several different brands available in the Australian market and the pricing can be very competitive. When you're buying a winch, there's a lot of things you need to consider before you go and invest. Winches should be backed by a national company, offer you national service and have a wide variety of spare parts available.
The price of a cheaper winch is certainly very enticing. But things to consider is when you're out there and you need to use your winch, it's a solo recovery. A good quality winch can mean the difference of getting home early or not getting home at all. Attention to detail and engineering will ensure that every time you use this winch will offer you fault free and reliable performance. Like a lot of things in Australia, you get what you pay for. So if you're looking to buy a winch on eBay, things to think about are what warranty does it come with and what support have you got. A lot of the cheaper winches are going to use cheaper component trees. When it comes time to invest in your winch, it may be worth using the highest quality components in the manufacturer design and the presentation and setup for that winch. The over-engineered specifications of a winch will ensure when you're touring the Australian Outback, it's always reliable and always up to the task. The next generation of shock absorbers is here. Leading the way in 4x4 suspension development, Old Man Emu introduces the most advanced and finely tuned shock absorber on the market. Nitro Charger Sport incorporates a new valving system that instantly adapts to all terrain for an outstanding smooth ride and phenomenal control. Backed by a three year 60,000 kilometre warranty, you can trust Nitro Charger Sport, built in Australia for Australian conditions. With nearly 100 years experience in designing and manufacturing heavy duty filtration, Donaldson is one of the most trusted brands in the market and our filters meet or exceed OEM specification. Originally developed for four wheel drives on mine sites, Donaldson's range of four wheel drive filters will perform in even the toughest environment, giving you peace of mind that you are buying the best and the most reliable filter for your vehicle and backed by a full manufacturer's warranty. Donaldson, tough filters for tough environments. When you need your manual gearbox rebuilt, don't start in reverse. Get it geared up right the first time with the team from 360 Gearboxes. As Australia's premium gearbox and diff specialist, 360 use the world's best gears, shafts, bearings and seals. 360 offer a guaranteed and quality changeover and A1 customer service. If your manual is grinding, crunching, sticking or blowing, demand the best 360 Gearboxes, a fast, reliable and high quality rebuild. For more info, visit 360gearboxesdiffs.com.au. Hi, I'm Alex. I got the 2001 Discovery 2 TD5. Got a suspension kit, two inch lift. I got a chip in it, the snorkel, and the three inch exhaust going through it. We've got the guards, we've got a diff locker in it, and what I like to get done down the track is get the Khan differentials and military grade UK style. I like to take it off road down to Neriga and Chawina. Also like to take it up here at Lovedale and go off road, do some gold pen and like to take it to Uluru, probably out Western Australia, Northern Queensland too. Got about a year ago, got a bit of work done to it, bit of work to go and yeah, should be good. Announcements on the next Your Rig trip and how you could be the weekly rig will be made shortly. And this week's Your Rig has won. A road and four wheel drive atlas and outback adventure map courtesy of HEMA Mapping. A complete diesel fuel filter kit thanks to Donaldson. A bottle of Sweet Baby Ray sauce. The Toyota Land Cruiser Legend DVD thanks to Terrain Tamer. A Nava USB power cup. A U-Fix-It windshield repair kit. Or tyre ratchet set. An AnySharp edge sharpener thanks to Kiesler. Caps from ARB and Carry Boy. A stubby of Bundaberg ginger beer. A pair of four wheel drive TV stickers. A prize pack from ARB including socks, travel mug, valve caps and a jacket. And it's all neatly wrapped up in an ARB carry bag. I'd also like to thank Simon and Miranda for having me on your rig on Full wheel drive TV and I'd like to thank all the sponsors for the prize packs, really appreciate that. I'll see you on the tracks and yeah, thanks for the journey.
We had a bit of a segment here where a clown went and jumped in a car and come out. He wanted to try and drive on two wheels, a bit like the trophy cart. He went out and fell on his side a few times, got at least a metre at one stage, but then we had the Aussie Stig come out. He wanted to have a go at it, but yeah, his ideas were a little bit different. This was Obi driving it, and he went hard, flipped her upside down, and that's about where it ended. Then, of course, what everyone had been waiting for, the end of the weekend, end of the day, Ashley Nichols got in the truck. His dad, Andrew Nichols, last year went for the jump, pulled 49 feet, fell a foot short of the world record. Was all prepped and excited about it, and Easter time had a little bit of a mishap and actually broke his back, which was very disappointing for Andrew. He's fine now. It was only a minor fracture, but his son just didn't hesitate, stepped into it straight away, and it'll bring a tear to your eye. You watch this jump, there's smoke coming out of both pipes right off the top of that ramp. He didn't back off at all. He just kept it pinned. From the time he took off on his run-up, he had the foot into it, and he went for as much speed as he could get. The truck flew sweetly through the air, come down, landed absolutely nicely. Ashley did exactly as he was told on landing to veer it into the bank to pull it up. We didn't want to take any chances of something going wrong, brakes failing or anything like that. We just figured we'd rather drive the truck into the bank. For you, it was just straight out the back and straight into it. Yeah, that's it. I didn't, I didn't want any messing around. I wanted to get in the truck and, and just do the jump, do the fly, and come into land. Well, talk us through that run in. How many gears did you go through? What happened? Um, I reckon I went through uh, six or seven gears. I wasn't really thinking. I was just, <laughs> once the light goes green sort of thing, I'm just focusing and I don't know what I did, mate, really. <laughs> it just all kind of happens. Nice and smooth on the landing? No, it was a bit rough. And what do you think when she came heading in towards that bank? I had no idea. That was my main concern, was slowing down after the jump. And it all happened so quick. I'd, and I was facing this way and everyone's going, are you right, are you right? And I just stuck my thumb up and said, yeah, <laughs> I've stopped and I've done it. So it was a pretty sweet landing as far as I'm concerned. Awesome job. Well done, Ashley. Who would you like to thank? Uh, I'd like to thank my old man, Rum Jungle Trucking Company, uh, all the sponsors, Light Force, Kickatin Along Creek, Just Reckon Toyotas. Uh, the list goes on. Um, Outback Extreme Clutch, the Truck Factory, I'm probably forgetting someone, but yeah, just all the sponsors, everyone up here at Love Day, Tony and all, all his crew, like, it, it just wouldn't happen without them. So, big thanks to them. Congratulations, well done. Thank you very much. This weekend was an absolute success and I've got to thank our sponsors, main sponsor City Discount Tyres and them guys are unbelievable. Light Force, Mickey Thompson Tyres, DP Chip, National 4x4 Show, Australia Extreme Clutches and North East Izuzu all chipped in as well. Thanks guys, you know, and I hope we can you know, keep sending business your way over the future. G'day viewers, I'm Paul Morgan from the National 4x4 and Outdoor Show and the Fishing and Boating Expo. We're really looking forward to the show this year from August 23rd to 25th down here in Melbourne. We've got a massive show prepared, we've got a massive action arena happening, plenty of new exhibitors coming on board, lots of manufacturers taking interest in coming on board this year. We're really looking forward to the show. So make sure you put the weekend of the 23rd to the 25th of August in your calendars. It's going to be a great event, it's really one you must come to. Hi, I'm Brett from 4x4 Obsession. Today we're fitting up one of Donaldson's heavy duty fuel filter kits to this Navara behind us, to the current 2.5 litre model. 
Most times they're fairly easy to fit. This one's a little more complicated. We had to make a bracket just to hold the new filter in place. When making the brackets, just make sure that they're away from any heat source and also that they're sturdy enough that they're not gonna rattle loose or vibrate loose and crack. When doing these, make sure you use a good quality filter kit. They'll come with everything you need, including a spare filter, especially if you're doing outback travel and in the current model vehicles, it's always a good idea to carry a spare filter. If you get stuck in the middle of nowhere and the filter light does come on, the current common rail injectors really don't like dirty fuel and you will do damage to the car prior to being able to get back to a town. So it's always a good idea to carry a spare filter. Filters is best done close to the original filter where the rubber lines are. It doesn't always have to go there, but it's the simplest fit up because the lines will just interlock with each other. When fitting it up, make sure you do pay attention to the direction of the fuel flow because it does have to have its flow in and flow out the right way around. Although today's fit up's taken a little bit more time than usual, having to make the mounting bracket system, it's turned out quite well. It's a neat fit up. On most other vehicles, you will find space on the firewall or on the side of the inner guard. Just as I said before, make sure it is clear of any heat sources and obstructions, and most of all, make sure it's easily accessible when you do have to change the filter. I can't stress how important it is to actually have a clean filtration system on, especially current model common rail vehicles. I would consider fitting up these kits almost mandatory, especially for outback travel. It's just another form of four-wheel drive insurance. Hey, you going? My name's Mark from the Australian Mud Racing. This is my car that I've built over a period of a few months. Spent a lot of time and effort on it, built it from scratch. Had the roof off it, done everything. It's running the 304, mildly worked with a Wolf computer with a Turbo 400 behind it, built by Bundora Autos with a Stalley. Running just a standard transfer case off a GQ. 411 diff gears, 16 inch track tyres, Pro Rat shifter, fully caged out, radiators in the rear. Just broke it, first time it's been out, so hopefully we can get a fix for the last two heats. What an amazing afternoon of action it's been. What an amazing episode of 4 -wheel Drive TV. I hope you've enjoyed it. And remember, tune in next week for more action on your favourite 4 -wheel Drive TV. I'm Simon Christie. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard. We'll see you next week.